Latinos and Indians began the decade with moderate tactics of strikes, boycotts, and demonstrations. Later in the 1960s, each group developed its own version of protest inspired by the militancy and energy of the Black Power movement. The economic situation of Latinos was at least as dire as that of African Americans. In 1960, one-third of Mexican Americans lived below the poverty line, and the unemployment rate for Latinos was double that of whites. Latino children attended some of the country's worst schools, where few of the teachers spoke or understood Spanish. The movement for rights for Mexican Americans burst into international prominence in 1965 when 5,000 members of the National Farm Workers Association joined a strike against grape growers in Delano, California. Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, two charismatic leaders of the NFWA, led a nationwide boycott of the purchase of grapes to force the growers to recognize the union. The grape boycott spread across the Atlantic to the United Kingdom. The strike went on for five years until the growers signed a contract recognizing the NFWA as the picker's representative. Chavez became an international leader for newly empowered Mexican Americans. His marches drew hundreds of sympathetic whites. He became a close friend of Robert F. Kennedy. Chavez, like Martin Luther King Jr., used Christian imagery and nonviolent tactics. He saw himself as part of an international Catholic movement for social justice. The NFWA's standard bore a stylized drawing of a black Aztec eagle, which became a symbol of Mexican-American pride. Other Latinos advocated cultural nationalism similar to the Black Power Movement. They found Chavez too committed to nonviolence and too eager to gain support from sympathetic white liberals. They described themselves as Chicanos appropriating what traditionally had been an ethnic slur used against them. In the late 1960s, the Chicano movement grew across the Southwest and West. Ethnic identity and militancy also spread among Puerto Ricans, both on the island and in some cities of the Northeast where hundreds of thousands of Puerto Ricans lived. In the mid-1960s, Puerto Rican activists in New York City created the Young Lords, patterned on the Black Panthers. Indians were among the poorest Americans in 1960. About 200,000 Indians left reservations for cities after President Dwight Eisenhower ended the status of Indians as wards of the government in 1953. This policy of termination stopped federal aid to reservations, but did not replace it with support for Indians who moved to cities. In June 1961, 700 representatives from 64 different Indian nations met in Chicago to draft a Declaration of Indian Purpose. It stated that, quote, we have the responsibility of preserving our precious heritage, end quote. The declaration marked the beginning of the Red Power Movement. It was little noticed at first, but gained momentum after President Johnson announced his support for Indian self-determination and created the National Council on Indian Opportunity. The American Indian Movement formed in Minneapolis in 1968. The organization inspired the November 1969 occupation of Alcatraz Island in San Francisco Bay when hundreds of young Indian activists demanded that the federal government turn over ownership of the land. In the 1970s, AIM and other Indian advocacy groups staged several well-publicized protests. In November 1972, they took over the offices of the Bureau of Indian Affairs in Washington, D.C., in February 1973, AIM activists occupied the site of the 1890 Battle of Wounded Knee on Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Richard Wilson, the president of the Ogala Sioux, denounced AIM as a band of social misfits and banned them from Pine Ridge. AIM, in turn, denounced Wilson and his tribal government as corrupt and vowed to stay at Wounded Knee until the federal government investigated what they called wholesale thievery and mismanagement at the BIA and in tribal councils. Federal marshals and AIM protesters faced off for 71 days. A gun battle in which two AIM activists were killed and a marshal was wounded ended the protest. Hundreds were arrested and both sides claimed victory. Although the government agreed to investigate claims of corruption, it did so only decades after the occupation at Wounded Knee.